Hi, I'm Paul Floyd, and today I'm joined by Scott Stewart. And today we will be discussing the ideological battle that is happening between both Al-Qaeda and Islamic State. So, Scott, um, we've seen physical fighting on the ground between Al-Qaeda affiliates and Al-Qaeda itself and Islamic State and its affiliates. Um, but that's also spread, that, that contest or that fight is also spread into the ideological realm, and uh, especially with some of the most recent uh, publications that have been coming out um, from Al-Qaeda and some of its affiliates. Yeah, really, this, this Ramadan, we've seen this, this campaign that uh, Al-Qaeda and, and it's uh, really the, the whole Al-Qaeda movement has launched against the, the Islamic State. The idea is to try to undercut uh, the Islamic State, to undercut their ideology in kind of the eyes of these wealthy donors in the Gulf of kind of the Muslim on the street, the potential jihadi, uh, you know, the foreign fighters are going to come and join. So they're really trying to say to these people, listen, you know, the Islamic State is, is deviant. They're misled. They have a number of, of things that they're doing incorrectly. We're the real jihad. Uh, you need to come and get on board with us in, instead of with these upstarts. So what you just said, the, the competition for both wealthy donors and, and you know, the, the militant, potential militant pool out there, it sounds basically like a competition for resources. Oh, absolutely. And, and that's really what it's about. I, of, of course, we have these ideological differences in how they execute the jihad, uh, kind of the strategy and the tactics behind that. But at, at the base, it really is a struggle for power for control, for money, for manpower. So what are these ideological uh, differences, if you will? How are they articulated back and forth? Well, really, I mean, in, at, at the, the, the big scale, at the, at the top is the idea of who to target first. You know, bin Laden always said that what we need to do is drive the Americans and the Crusaders out of these Muslim territories. Then we can attack the local regimes. Whereas uh, the Islamic State has been, no, the caliphate is here and now. We're going to establish it now. And so that's been more of a, you know, fighting the near enemy as opposed to the far enemy. Uh, there's also a lot of other kind of application issues. Uh, Al-Qaeda takes issues with the way that the Islamic State has, and, and this is gone on for a decade now with the way that they've really employed excessive sectarianism in Iraq and now in Syria, but also this idea of, of their wide declaration of takfir or declaring other Muslims as non-Muslims so they can attack them. And, and specifically, uh, they're declaring other jihadists, uh, groups like Jabhat al-Nusra and, and other range of jihadists operating in Iraq and Syria as non-Muslims, and therefore they're attacking them and killing them. And so uh, basically Al-Qaeda saying, you know, this is deviance, this is wrong, you're an extremist, you can't do this. And so in one of the most recent Al-Qaeda publications, we saw that uh, they said, this is who we are and where we're from. And on the front, they had pictures, and one of the pictures actually had Zara Kawi on that, uh, on that uh, photo saying, basically, he, he is the original member of Al-Qaeda and one of our affiliates. Yeah, that was actually, that was inside of the Al Rasala magazine. Uh, and it was actually it, with an article uh, that was written by a senior Taliban figure. The interesting thing about that article is he's like able to say, listen, I've been in Afghanistan. I fought with bin Laden. I saw him in the good times. I saw him under pressure. I saw what his, his ideology was, his manhaj, and, and how he conducted himself. You guys are not bin Laden. You can't claim to be the heirs of bin Laden. And that's one of the things we've seen, uh, for example, in uh, the magazines coming out from the Islamic State, uh, from some of the videos saying, hey, you know, we are the real heirs of jihad, of bin Ladenism, and uh, al-Zawahiri and the rest of the al-Qaeda guys have, have been led astray. Uh, this Taliban guy is saying, Wait, no. I was. I know Bin Laden. I was there. I fought with him. I fought with Al Zawahiri, who was with Bin Laden. Zarqawi was with Bin Laden. He was Al Qaeda, and you guys have really deviated from what they were doing. And, and so, it's, I, I think it's a powerful argument. The, the thing is, though, is seeing whether or not uh, you know these eighteen-year-old hotheads, uh, you know, who want to go fight, are going to take time to read these things, or whether they're going to be sucked in by kind of you know the more social media quick hitters, you know, the ultra violence. Uh, of the Islamic State, uh, and, and you know those things are very appealing to these you know young kids uh, you know sitting in mom's basement on on the keyboard you know being promised a Yazidi se a sex slave if you if you emigrate to Syria, and that kind of leads me to the, this next question of. What are the consequences of this infighting? You know, we're basically on the, on the jihadist and militant landscape, we now have two big poles of power that are now fighting both physically and ideologically. Um, does, this, does this fracturing a good thing or a bad thing for the fight against jihadism? 
I, I think it's both. I mean, on, on one term, it's obviously splitting and dividing, and they're killing each other. Uh, and whether that is in Syria, whether that's Iraq, whether that's in Libya, and now in Afghanistan, where we have the Taliban going against the Islamic State's course on Billy out there. Uh, that side of it's good. On the other side, though, you do have that potential uh, for competition uh, and, and, you know, trying to, for each side, trying to become, uh, you know, more spectacular in their attacks. Uh, one of the, the places I think that, I mean, we're going to see that within the regions uh, and within these, these franchises in the regions that, that have the capabilities to do that. Um, I'm also afraid we're going to see some of that going on, you know, with the grassroots in the West uh, as we kind of have, you know, competing, uh, you know, claims and, and camps there. Uh, really so far, uh, you know, within the grassroots uh, movement, most of the deadly or the most deadliest attacks have been conducted by the Al-Qaeda sympathizers, things like the, the Charlie Hebdo attack, things like the Toulouse shootings, things like the Boston Marathon bombing, things like, uh, you know, the Fort Hood shootings. So uh, they can kind of, you know, ha have uh, this claim to, to being more spectacular. Uh, but I think we're going to see that competition ramping up and Islamic State really trying to, uh, you know, encourage their people to match uh, you know, what they've seen by Al Qaeda. And of course, we'll see the same thing happening at uh, the regional uh, level. Uh, we've seen the Islamic State, uh, Vilayat in, in Yemen, trying to conduct uh, spectacular attacks. Actually, they're kind of failing at this point. They, they've conducted some, some uh, suicide bombings at mosques, uh, but they really haven't shown the aptitude for, for suicide bombings that Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula has, for example. Well, that's something we've noted that the uh, as Islamic State has popped up, that a lot of the, play, instead of it necessarily growing and sending out its own, own nodes, that it's basically converting where militants already are. Are. Um, so it hasn't really changed capabilities of militants around the world, but what it has done has changed patterns of violence. So places where we've seen consistent actors doing consistent tactics, those are shifting slowly but surely. Yeah, and, and that's what we even saw with Ansar al Khalifa in, in Algeria. Okay, so we had this, this split off from Al Qaeda and the Islamic Maghreb. Uh, you know, one of the first things they do is they kidnap this Frenchman and behead him. Um, so it kind of, whereas in the old days we saw Al Qaeda and the Islamic Maghreb taking foreigners, holding them for ransom. So it, it was really a shift in their operations, it really wasn't a shift in capability. They could still kidnap a Westerner, but they just did something different with him. Absolutely. Well, that's a lot to consider. Thank you, Scott. And for anything else on this uh, topics or something that's related, please join us at stratford.com.